next on Inside Indiana Business. We have 150 corporate headquarters in Carmel, and those corporations need to hire the best, and brightest, and smartest people from all over the globe. And, and so by investing in quality of life, by investing in a beautiful downtown, it supports those corporations. Chris Kendall Market, an example of Carmel's strategy to get people to live and work there. We catch up with seven-term outgoing mayor Jim Brainerd on what's next. The Indiana connection to hope for cancer patients. The rollout of a pharmaceutical giant's new drug production facility and its potential life-saving impact. Plus, I mean, I just love that the downtown feels, it feels like it's been here for a while. It's not new construction. It has the charm. It's got the buildings all look different. HGTV star Mina Starziak Hawk of Good Bones fame on the move. Why she has her eye on this city in Hamilton County. For 25 years, we have been Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you this week from just north of Indianapolis, Carmel and the Carmel Chris Kindle Market. This is a very popular open air holiday market which depicts the old world traditions of Christmas in Germany. It was founded as a nonprofit organization six years ago and has grown into one of the most popular Christmas markets in the entire country. The holiday market has attracted well over one million visitors since its inception and was just voted best holiday market in USA Today's 10 best competition for a fourth time. Last year, the Carmel Chris Kindle market generated more than $6 million in sales, a 25% increase from the previous year. And organizers say sales this year on pace to top that. To have the market as a place for people to meet their neighbors, meet their family and friends, um, really fulfilled a need that the community had during the winter months. So it's been wonderful to watch everybody embrace it. Joining me now is the, the brainchild behind the Chris Kindle market. Carmel Mayor Jim Brainerd and Mayor, thanks for joining us. It's uh, great to be with you. Well, and you are uh, about to leave office after 28 years. And I think this Chris Kindle market, this concept and what this has become representative of a lot of change in Carmel. How did this start? It was a trip you took to Germany, right, that kind of sparked this? It was early in December, and I was in several cities speaking uh, on behalf of the United States and Carmel. And every time I went to a new city or town, they took me to the Chris Kindle market. And it suddenly occurred to me, I think, this would be a fun thing to do here. We've always, you know, we have great summer events and festivals, but yet uh, not a lot to do in the winter. We are very close to the Palladium, the Carmel Arts District, uh, major investments. And at the time those happened, not everybody was on board. There was some controversy involved in that. Talk about creating that, what you felt as, uh, was the importance of doing that, of, of creating and investing in those kinds of projects. Well, many suburbs in the United States don't have centers. They don't have downtowns. They don't have places where people from all different backgrounds can come together and get to know each other. And we wanted a downtown here in Carmel. And the people who live in Carmel told me they wanted a downtown. The question is, what's the draw to that downtown? So we, Indianapolis had invested very successfully in a lot of amateur and professional sports. We chose to invest in the arts. Okay. Uh, and the Palladium is, you know, one of the world's great concert halls and our theaters and cabaret at, at uh, Hotel Feinstein's Cabaret, Hotel Carmichael all make part of this entertainment campus here in the middle of our new downtown. It's worked out very well for us. Americans in the Arts just did a study, uh, a national organization that showed that uh, our investment in the arts last year had a $41 million impact. What role, in your view, has this creation of a downtown uh, an arts district played in terms of attracting and expanding the corporate base uh, and economic development projects here in, in Carmel. We have 150 corporate headquarters in Carmel and those corporations need to hire the best and brightest and smartest people from all over the globe. And, and so by investing in quality of life, by investing in a beautiful downtown, it supports those corporations. It, 
it helps them create good jobs. Uh, you, know, you know, if they can't get the person they want to locate in central Indiana, they're certainly not going to expand here. And they may choose to leave and move their headquarters somewhere else. Yep. It's vitally important that we make certain this is a great place to live. People today, especially with the workforce shortage that we have, have choices where they live their lives, or raise their families, and, and choose to work. And so we have to focus on making this a beautiful, safe, uh, fun place to be. Legacy, as you look back uh, on your 28 years in office, about to leave here in a, a matter of weeks, what do you, do you think will be your, your, your lasting legacy? Well, I think a downtown. Uh, Carmel did not have a downtown like many U.S. suburbs. When we started today, we had this beautiful, walkable downtown uh, where somebody can leave their house, uh, walk to a restaurant, walk to a store. We have places that people from all the different backgrounds that live in Carmel and in this country, it, it's so important. We have places they can gather together and get to know each other. Carmel Mayor Jim Brainerd, thank you for joining us. Really thank appreciate you. it, uh, and good luck. Uh, what is next? What uh, Any any uh, breaking news you can give us? Not tonight? yet. Not, Not yet. yet? Okay. I'll, all right. That'll be, I'll talk about that in January. Well, coming up, innovative cancer treatment, the new Central Indiana drug facility preparing to launch, and the connection to a Purdue serial health science entrepreneur. That's when we come back. Welcome back to downtown Carmel. Pharmaceutical giant Novartis will soon fire up the production lines at a brand new plant in Indianapolis. Our Kylie Valletta is there with details on how the $100 million deal came together. Kylie. Thanks, Gary. This new Novartis plant will make Cluvicto a cutting edge drug to treat prostate cancer. It's somewhat of a full circle moment. This drug was discovered right here in Indiana by Dr. Philip Lau, a serial entrepreneur and legendary scientist at Purdue University. This is the first facility of its kind in the world. Nearing its opening day, the plant will create more than 100 jobs and make radio ligand therapies or RLTs for the France based pharma giant. Nuclear medicine is considered a game changer for cancer. Radiation is delivered only to targeted cancer cells without damaging healthy cells. Central Indiana is emerging as a hub for nuclear medicine. And what you have seen is that there are a number of other companies that are also coming into Indianapolis and following the, the, the great work and pioneering work that we're doing. Novartis scaled up the project from $70 million to $100 million based on growing demand especially for Pluvicto, which treats late-stage prostate cancer. There's nothing, even a quarter of the scale um, within our portfolio uh, that matches the uh, size and scale of the Indiana facility. Lau discovered the drug in his Purdue lab. Novartis picked up Pluvicto when it purchased Lau's startup, Indosite. The deal helped open the door to Novartis choosing Indiana for what it calls its flagship facility. Making nuclear medicine is a race against the clock because the radioactive materials degrade quickly. Each dose must reach the patient in just three to five days from the moment it's made. So Novartis put the plant right next door to the Indianapolis airport. And that ease of access to um, destinations across North America through Indianapolis airport um, has been uh, you know, a key driver for our decision making around why we invested in the space. Purdue owns royalty rights to Plavicto. This year alone, the university made $100 million off the drug, which was discovered and soon will be made in Indiana. Every time we release a product from the Indianapolis facility, uh, that we're actually not just delivering the medicine, but we're delivering hope within that medicine. Novartis says the current footprint for this plant is just the beginning. There are green fields on this property for expansion. And Novartis says it will continue to invest in this Indiana plant to send nuclear medicine, not just throughout North America, but around the world. Gary, back to you. All right, Kylie, thank you. Great story. Well, Central Indiana entrepreneur Kathy Langham is continuing to carve out a niche for her well-known company in the health and life sciences space. She's my guest this week on the Business and Beyond podcast. Kathy co-founded Langham Logistics with her brother and sister almost 35 years ago. Still maintains strong logistics ties to the automotive, industrial, 
and retail side, but COVID has pointed Langham and her business in a new direction, one related to the life sciences. The temp controlled warehouses are really specific to pharma, med device, and biotech. And they're, they're companies that really need high service, high security, uh, and, and very expensive controlled space. Much more with Langham Logistics co-founder Kathy Langham on the next edition of the Business and Beyond podcast presented by PNC. Look for it Monday at InsideIndianaBusiness.com. It's time now to go inside innovation. Purdue University expanding its portfolio in the semiconductor space. The university opening a research and development hub on the West Lafayette campus. Purdue partnering with Belgium-based semiconductor company IMEC on that project. To South Bend now where the University of Notre Dame is joining a coalition of media companies and universities to research artificial intelligence. The alliance is led by IBM and Facebook's parent company Meta. The goal is to study the safety, security, and trustworthiness of the technology. I mean, I just love that the downtown feels, it feels like it's been here for a while. It's not Coming up next, Two Chicks and a Hammer star Mina Starziak making a big move here in Hamilton County. Find out what she's planning for downtown Noblesville when we come back. Another Central Indiana entrepreneur on the move in this week's IBJ. See what's next for the owner of Sam Square Pie, a business profiled on Inside Indiana Business earlier this year. Here's what's making news around Indiana, brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors, Indiana's 21,000 realtors, the neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. There we go. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I love, love it. HGTV audiences across the globe fell in love with the mother-daughter duo of Karen Lane. Wait, that's not the end of the story? And Mina Sturziak, huh? <laughs> the two born and bred Hoosiers debuted their home renovation show Good Bones in 2016 and remain two of the network's most popular personalities. I remember when it was just the two of us. But after eight seasons and over 100 episodes later, the hit HGTV series officially signed off the air in October. I never went into home renovation or life wanting to be on TV, um, but it's been really fun. I think I'm kind of good at it, uh, and I would love to continue doing it. I just couldn't do 13 houses at once anymore. It was a crazy pace to keep. And that's not the only change. Two Chicks District Co., the popular retail store frequently seen on the show, is permanently closing its storefront on Indy's near South Side. The struggle that the shop, I think, has in its current location is um, we probably have 85 plus percent of the people that walk through the door are traveling. They don't live in Indianapolis. Most of them don't even live in Indiana. People come from other states. People come from out of the country, which is amazing because they're coming to Indiana because they saw the episode of the store or just know that the store exists because we film in a lot during the show, but the neighborhood um, never really got behind it. Now Mina is on the move, relocating her district co-retail store to downtown Noblesville. Noblesville it was just very excited to have two chicks and a hammer here, two chicks district co here. So it's been incredibly welcoming and they've made it impossible to say no to really. It's I think it's gonna be a great opportunity. What excites you the most about Noblesville? I I mean I just love that the downtown feels it feels like it's been here for a while. It's not new construction, it has the charm, it's got the buildings all look different, which I love being from downtown. It's not cookie cutter. Which begs the question, could Noblesville be the next neighborhood Mina tackles on HGTV? I I mean, I would love to be able to keep making TV and do it based out of Noblesville. You have to be working in a place where the city's supporting what you're doing. I think it could work here, yeah. Mary Rachel Redman, Inside Indiana Business. All right, Mary Rachel, thank you. Here now is a look at some of the stories making headlines around Indiana. We started in Elkhart, where in just a few weeks, people will move into a new family shelter. Our partners at Fox Michiana report 
Faith Mission of Michiana recently cut the ribbon on the Graber House. The not-for-profit helps families transition into more permanent housing. Wisconsin-based Packer Sanitation Services says 76 workers are being affected by the termination of a contract at the Indiana Packers Corporation facility in Delphi. The company says the move will result in the layoff or relocation of the workers at the plant. The contractor had provided sanitation services at the plant since March of 2016. The developer behind the revitalization of the historic Bank Calumet building in Hammond has closed on construction financing for the project. NWI Development Group is in the midst of a $28 million project to turn the nearly 100-year-old building into the bank, a mixed-use development with apartment retail and event space. It's time now for Eye on Education. Indiana University is named a University of Missouri leader as chancellor for its Indianapolis campus. Latha Ramshan, who now serves as executive vice chancellor and provost for the University of Missouri, will begin leading IU Indianapolis February 12th. New leadership at Purdue Northwest as well. Kenneth Chris Holford will begin as Purdue Northwest Chancellor January 8th. He currently serves as provost and vice chancellor of academic affairs. And the Boilermaker Alliance has a new CEO, the nonprofit that helps Purdue University student athletes use their name, image, and likeness to boost charitable organizations, naming Dave Neff as its new president and CEO. Neff most recently served as chief growth officer for Indianapolis based growth firm Prolific. When we come back, celebrating the holidays, Hoosier style, where to go, what to see, and the economic impact holiday events and festivals have on Indiana. Well, this time of year can be perfect for exploring fun things around Indiana with family and friends, and there are lots of opportunities to do just that. In Hammond, you can check out A Christmas Story Comes Home, now until December 30th. See the holiday classic through animatronic window displays of memorable scenes from the iconic movie set in a fictional Hammond. If holiday lights are more your thing, in Frankfurt you can see more than one million lights at the Festival of Lights at TPA Park. And there's a 68-acre light display set to music and a light show at a community Christmas in Union City at Harder Park. In Shipshawana, you can go for a two-mile car ride as you check out the Lights of Joy at the flea market grounds. There's Christmas in the Park at Spencer Park in Logansport until January 2nd. And you can tour the Cyberling Mansion and Howard County Museum in Kokomo, decorated with lights inside and out. This year's theme, the Nutcracker Ballet. How successful has the idea of an outdoor German Christmas market in Carmel been? Well, the numbers tell the story. Total market sales have grown from $1.4 million in that first year in 2017 to nearly $6 million last year. Last year, more than 450,000 people visited the market, and that number is expected to be eclipsed this year. There are many markets all across the United States that mirror the ones that happen in Germany. And from the onset, the mayor and my board wanted this market to be unique in the way that it was uh, very authentic. Um, and so that means that part of my job is going to Germany, sampling new foods, and then working with local companies to mirror those recipes and get them as close as possible. We also import our products from Europe. So we have some Polish pottery. We have some different things from different countries. The majority of it, though, is from Germany. And that really sets us apart from the competition. Well, the holidays certainly can be a great time to explore new places, new experiences with family and friends. From a ride on the Reindeer Express to watching hot candy get shaped into candy canes. Can't go to the North Pole? Head on down to Santa Claus in southern Indiana. Let's go now to Brittany Smith, who is standing by at the Children's Museum with five unique Hoosier experiences. Brittany. Thanks, Gary. We've routed up some festive, classic, and new ways to experience the holidays throughout the state of Indiana. 
And as you can see behind me, we're actually at the Winter Fair at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. This is a new exhibit that just opened last month and it's running through February 11th. I feel like I've been transported to a winter wonderland with games and activities, beautiful snow features, celebrations of all different holidays for different cultures. It's truly a fun experience for the whole family. And if you haven't been to the Children's Museum in a while, this is a great exhibit to come out and revisit. Next up, we're heading to the epicenter of Christmas in the state of Indiana, Santa Claus, Indiana. If you've had this city on your bucket list, this might be the year to actually pay it a visit and check it out. You can visit the post office of Santa Claus to write Santa a letter and you will actually hear back before Christmas Day. They have so many fun different interactive elements there like live reindeer, they have beautiful lights and arts and craft show. You can experience roasting chestnuts over an open fire. Truly a traditional old timey feel to uh, Christmas in Santa Claus, Indiana. Next up, we're traveling to Fort Wayne, Indiana for the Gingerbread Festival at the History Center there. It's been around for more than 30 years and it's actually running through December 19th. They have rooms filled with beautiful gingerbread houses created by local students as well as professionals. Next up, we have the pleasure of going to Noblesville, Indiana for the Reindeer Express. I actually felt lucky enough to check it out yesterday myself personally to hop on the train, experience Santa heading to the Santa's workshop. It's a little over an hour ride for the family. You can reserve your seats in advance. Santa's on board, making his way through all the cars. You'll even see hot cocoa and snacks and candy. Write a letter to Santa while you're on the ride. And it is running through December 23rd, and it is a really fun way to get in the festive spirit for the holidays. And then last but not least, for those with a sweet tooth and looking for a new adventure in Southern Indiana, you can head down to Martinsville for the Candy Kitchen. And the Yelp reviews, this one's noted as the candy cane factory of Indiana. You can actually see them making the candy, cane in, candy canes in the kitchen the same way they've been doing it for over 100 years at Martinsville Candy Kitchen. They actually put on their calendar throughout the month the different times that they'll be running the demo. So make sure you check the calendar before you go. And it's truly like stepping back in history. And while you're there, you can actually fill up your stockings with some great chocolate treats, not just the candy canes. So I'm gonna throw it back to you, Gary. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and you all get to explore a new to you experience throughout the state of Indiana. All right, Brittany, thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Inside Indiana Business from the Chris Kendall Market in downtown Carmel. As we leave you this week, we take a look at holiday offerings, winter getaways in other parts of Indiana. The south shore of Lake Michigan and northwest Indiana will be a popular holiday spot featuring cross-country skiing, ice skating, and sledding, even walks along the snow-covered dunes. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gary Dick. Go out and make it a successful week.